We're in Hendersonville, Tennessee for the Tennessee Honey Festival. I'm John Ashton and this is What America Eats. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from, everyone loves honey. It's basically nature's candy. But as you may know, honey and the hard-working honey bee are under siege. So it takes a united front to help bring awareness to this issue in hopes to enact change. And that's the mission of the Tennessee Honey Fest. Each year, food vendors, performers, and apparently a unicorn from the middle of Tennessee and beyond come together to pay homage to the faithful honey bee and its delicious discharge while also raising awareness to the growing scarcity of these amazing creatures. In order to gain a greater understanding of how this festival came to be, I met up with the festival's founder, Erica Bristia, to learn more. I run and operate U.S. Pest Protection and I got involved with bees. Had an idea about how U.S. Pest Protection can get involved in saving the bees. I thought, let's have a honey festival because Tennessee doesn't have a honey festival. And ever since the idea came about, it's just blossomed into this amazing festival where we're making a difference, the conversation is being had. Bees now, because they've been on the decline in some states. How are they in Tennessee? So the local Tennessee honeybee is definitely being affected by a lot of different reasons. And so what our job is to do and what our focus is is repopulating the local honeybees so that there are wild honeybees everywhere and I know we have some here today in fact um, that are going to be flying around eating and drinking all the different uh, juices that are going to be around so we're doing our part to repopulate the native Tennessee bee. What attracts people to this festival? People come here because they want local honey and they want to learn about bees. It's the most amazing thing that happens because when you start talking about bees everybody is interested and everybody has a story about their grandfather that was a beekeeper or their aunt or their you know their grandmothers and their gardeners so people are just really genuinely interested in bees and you have some great music yes we have it's nashville come on of course we've got great City. music and then there's lots of local farmers sharing yes absolutely this is truly a festival with a mission, a mission best understood by the festival's beekeepers. I met up with them next to find out how one ends up in such a specialized profession. What made you become a beekeeper? So I became a beekeeper in the beginning with my husband because we have Fireflower Bakery and we use all organic ingredients and local stuff in our bread and so we knew we needed local honey and we wanted it to be our honey and so we started raising bees and then it just kind of like snowballed and we got bigger all the way up to 30 hives this year. One hive, how much honey will I produce? Um, we make sure that our bees have enough honey for the winter and so we just pull enough so that they still have some but we usually pull it'll be about maybe like five gallons per hive. And what do you love about being a beekeeper? Oh my god, everything! <laughs> I love the bees, they're so smart and they're so good at what they do and it's so fun to watch them come and go and take care of each other and respecting that cycle of nature and getting to use it in another product and just kind of share it with people is my favorite thing. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank for caring you. about the future of our bees. Thanks, Thanks for chatting with me about it. Happy days. Beekeeping's an unusual hobby. How did you guys get started? I've wanted bees my whole life. Married this guy and bucket list and he said, let's give it a go, so. Now some people's bucket list is to go to Bora Bora. Your bucket list was, I want my own bees. bees. Yes, absolutely. They're so interesting. I've never seen a creature work so hard. Every single thing is interesting. How they make the honey, how the, the females kick the boys out in the winter. They kick the boys out? They do. Have yes. you got some more things left on your bucket list? Well, now Bora Bora, because you brought that up. Oh, I'm sorry, chap. That's okay. We'll see you soon. What do you love about beekeeping? The people, to be honest with you. People you sell your honey to. If I'm at somebody's house and they have bees in their house, and I'm removing bees from their house. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time yeah. out here. I take them out to my farm and take they reestablish. How know, many bees have you got? About 55 colonies right now. What signifies a good honey? I personally like a really darker honey because it tends to have a little more gusto and just tastes a little different. Give me some facts that the viewers wouldn't know about bees. The reason why we have different colors of honey is based on the floral sources. You know, everybody asks, what can you do for bees? Plant some trees, plant some flowers. 
and it just adds to the diversity of the types of honeys that they bring in, the nectar sources. After hearing from the beekeepers, I wanted to see what the festival's patrons had to say about these insects delicious products. What do you love about honey? Almost everything. My dad has five hives, and yeah. so I grew up on honey, really, and the thing I love about it is it's all natural. Yeah. I mean, there's no additive anything. It fascinates me that those little bees can make such a delicious thing. <laughs> I just love it all. Really? I tried the lavender honey, and we're actually drinking a tea, hibiscus and ginger. Is it good? It's wonderful. Now, have you learned any bee facts? They were just telling us which ones the working ones and all of that. What are you looking forward to most today? Just relaxing and chilling out with my kids. I love it. <laughs> and they look happy. What made you come to the Honey Festival? It just seemed like a wonderful project. I mean, I love the honey idea, but I love the music and the people. Food's great, so. Can you think of anything honey wouldn't get along with? No, I'd dip almost anything in it. I, I would. In I'd... fact, I tried it with broccoli one day. With... <laughs> It was finally time to try some honey for myself, but I'm not just going to try it, I'm going to judge it. This is no ordinary taste test. Judging honey takes some serious skills. These are the judges today. I've been kindly invited. On the score sheet, we're looking for presentation, flavor, and color. Come on, let's have some honey. We need more sweetness in our life. We don't do, we, we That's do. what life's Never about. Enough. I'm sure you at home will find it bothersome for me to complain about judging the honey festival, but I must admit it, this is quite the challenge. All of this honey was delicious, and the flavor profiles were all very subtle. This isn't something I can do on my own, so I'll have to talk to my fellow judges and get their two cents. I've judged many contests over the years. This is really hard because it's a tiny little nuance and it's so personal. It's subtle and it's profound very subtle. at the same time, but yeah. it's subtle. Because a lot of the texture is always going to be the same. I want to hear from you guys, what was everybody's favorite? The whole look, the, the presentation, I love Just Bees because it, it had the application of the homemade bread yeah. and right. the biscuits. And it was really delicious. Really I love to see it because they're relatively young yeah. and their passion from honey. And their yeah. heart felt. Their heart felt. Doing. Everybody is a winner. Truly, right, go in helping protect the bees and, then, and following their well, passion, and I love the creativity. Um, Let's see who wins. I don't know. The winner of the Tennessee Honey Festival is Just Bees. I was so happy for my friends at Just Bees. Their passion for the product certainly shines through, and they're most deserving of this award. And to better understand what it takes to earn it, I wanted to don the infamous beekeeper suit and spend some time with the bees myself. Jay, a lot of people are scared of the bees. Why is that? You know, I think they just don't know any better. And one of the things that we're trying to do is get over that hump, get over that fear of the unknown, the danger. And what we're finding is when they stick their hands in those holes and they hold that frame of bees, it overcomes all their fear and they realize the bees don't want to hurt you. They don't want to do anything to you. They want to do their own thing. They want to make honey. They want to pollinate our crops. The education is our biggest hurdle right now. So we need to get out and we got to teach more. We got to get out. We got to show more. These kids got to put their hands on these things. They got to feel more. Yeah. This is a huge under taking but we're ready to do it you know we started as beekeepers about honey and now it's not about the honey it's about the bees give us some bee facts give me five bee five facts fast in under five seconds okay yeah. one out of every three bites you take is thanks to a bee there's a hundred thousand bees in those colonies right behind them honey never spoils pollen is a protein honey is a carb uh, there's only one queen in the entire colony and she lays 1500 eggs a day and she can live for five years if you treat her right drop the mic drop the mic shake your hand cheerio as Jay Williams just showed us, many of us take bees for granted. But thanks to the amazing work of this festival and its participants, not only do I have a newfound appreciation for bees, I also have a better understanding in the role they play in our ecosystem. The work done at this festival is vital to educating the public on the importance of honeybees, and it's certainly made a believer out of me. It's been such a sweet treat visiting the Tennessee Honey Festival here in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Until next time, I'm John Ashton, and this is What America Eats, or at least should be. Cheerio for now. <laughs>